Hi, uh, some days ago Lee Perry Smith uh, released a video demoing um, this plugin conformed by UV made by Johan Steen uh, together with Lee and um, I thought it was a really cool uh, plugin and uh, well I th Lee told he's, he's going to release a new thread in new text forums um, regarding this plugin probably I don't know maybe a more extended explanation uh, but well, from what I saw in this video I guess he's going to focus more on um, uh, morphing between uh, objects uh, with different with uh, different shapes, but same uh, same topology in UV. And uh, well, um, well, I, I saw this video. Uh, I remembered some videos I made before um, about texturing, about making UV maps, and I thought uh, this plugin would be great for it. Uh, so I'm going to use it uh, for for this object that I used last time, this ugly object. And well, basically, uh, this video is about um, making UVs for um, in this case, uh, for using a linear interpolation in Lightwave, because um, if you want to paint textures in Photoshop, you really need to use the other uh, interpolations that Lightwave gives you uh, that make that make a smooth um, smooth transition of the deformation between polygons, not this uh, stepped like here in linear. But the issue is uh, Light Wave interpolates the, the polygons here sometimes differently than other applications or for example, catmull doesn't support it. So this is a catmull object this with some edge weight going on here. It's, uh, it's nothing fancy, just so you can see. Okay, there's the edge weight. So you could not have this in sub patch. Um, and really, this is the target is for something like someone that uses a 3D painting application like 3D coat or ZBrush or whatever people use. And normally, linear linear UVs are safer, um, but they do not have most of the times. The, the subdivision surface compensation that um, light wave interpolation gives you, so that's why I'm making this video. Uh, so, going straight forward, uh, last time I did this, I think I overcomplicated the, the whole process, and I hope that uh, you want this plugin makes it simpler. Um, so, basically, I have this object, uh, and I have this UV I made with uh, PLG. I used um, these edges as seams, and as you can see, uh, there's going to be some issues uh, with applying, for example, checkerboard to this UV. Uh, there are some places where things not are not going to be good because of the, um, the nature of the object. Of course, this is a, a test object. It's not a real situation object, but the modeling has a lot of influence in the quality of the texturing. But it's, it's just an example to show some problems that might show up. So, uh, what I'm going to do is basically copy this to another layer and go to the options, put the catmull level really low, like 1, and freeze. So now I have my main object, the freeze in the background, and I run the, I have the UV selected, and I run Yohan's plugin. I'm going to call this SDS deform. And now I have I have my base mesh picking picking up the shape of uh, deformation that subdivision makes to it. So it's it's a crude approximation, but um, it, it will not be perfect in easy, easing up the UV. But well, it will help. Uh, so basically, now what I would need to do is uh, I can come here, copy this unwrap, and make it SDS, and when I relax the UV, I get this. So it's uh, the relation of this UV with the subdivision surface it's much better than if if I than the one picked up from the, the base mesh so that's why I use the um, this morph okay now I'm gonna use another type of map like I used in the other video to show up this maybe a little bit better uh, I'm gonna use shell so I'm gonna use art spheres polycoloring to make the seams without breaking up the object <coughs> uh, let me see. Make UV. Okay, make atlas from surface. So, since every surface is different, it's gonna make them all different. So I'm gonna call this map shells. Make UV. Relax. Align. Wait. Align and pack. Okay. So now I can bring this back to the original surface. Um. So the point order is the same, everything is the same, so 
you have the, if you have the object loaded in another application there won't be any issue uh, so again you can see that this one picked from the from the faces mode so the, there's going to be really nasty deformation here um, this shape here shows up, shows up like a square but uh, in here would be more like a trapezium um, some polygons here show like a tri show up like a triangle but they here look like more trapezium or rectangle so again um, I go to the morph to the subdivision morph and if I relax this let's make a copy shells SDS relax align and this is the important thing it's just scaling to 3d mesh okay uh, now there will be some difference between these maps so no more of squares like it would be in the, the base mesh squarish uh, shapes but in the shells SDS you have trapeziums that's what this looks more like and another thing I think it's really cool in the, um, this plugin is you can for example make serious distortions of your object in layouts here I just use some bones and twisted and bended and you can really pick that object so it's not even the same object because it's so subdivided but since you if you use the same UV uh, you can pick it up so let me use here trans or deform and it, it's like um, you make a morph where this is a proxy of this final shape and it's really cool to maybe I don't know maybe if you want to keep the base object but paint it thinking about the final shape something I don't know <laughs> it's uh, might be cool to have this um, the ability to, to pick up complicated meshes to simple ones and one last thing um, I would like to Talk about here is uh, Phil Nolden released recently some videos of 3D codes uh, PTEX use of PTEX and it's really it's really cool. I uh, hope that Lightweight has PTEX one day. And but meantime, there's um, a kind of a tricky way to kind of kind of use the same way of thinking of uh, of PTEX in Lightwave where where you have an hierarchy of uh, polygons in the UV. So I'm just gonna come here. For, imagine I, for example, want this polygons here bigger than the rest. Uh, in this case, I'll have to make a copy because I'm going to break up the object. Just select this, cut, paste, and then I'm going to make an. I'm going to call it PTEX, and I'm going to apply the SDS deformation. Okay, and now I can cut this, paste it back. Okay. And now I'm going to size this up, so because I want these polygons have to have more resolution than the other ones. And now I'm going to copy this UV texture, so the shells, PTEX. Well, of course not PTEX, but it's, uh, it's, it's an approximation. <laughs> and I'm going to relax from here. I'm going to align. Important thing: adjust scaling to 3D mesh. And here you can see have this big ones and the, the small ones. Uh, it seems there are some loose points here. I'm just going to clear this up, select the points, clear map, and I can pack again. Okay. Uh, now put it, everything back, delete the morph, merge, select the polling guns, use Nitty Cyrus, copy and paste UV, and it's done. So showing up this with checkerboard. Let's Let's go through the through the UVs. Uh, so first, I have the unwrap, the initial one. Then I have the unwrap SDS. So you can see, so the unwrap and the unwrap SDS. So you can see it's quite it solves things quite better than uh, the original one. Of course, it will never be able to solve in one polygon what it's going to happen in 64 polygons, but well, it's going to ease up things. Uh, and then we have shell speed text. So here you have these ones with more information than those up there. So just a quick uh, review of the, the other video and, and just saying thank you to Johan for, and to Lee for this plugin. I think it's really cool and many people find 
various applications for it. Cheers.